All right, buddy, so what's your name and where are you from? My name is Splinter, and I'm from Bakersfield, California, Kern County. Okay, Splinter. Yes, sir. Well, you came at me with a pretty interesting story. You said you've done pretty much life on an installment plan. Not really. You've done about how much altogether? 10 to 12 years. Okay, 10 to 12 years. Uh, you kept coming in and out, you know, right. revolving door from violations. I'm, I'm sure it's stemming from drug charges, correct? Stuff like um, that. Some drug charges. I don't know. I was kind of slick, man. I never really didn't caught with that kind of stuff. But mostly oh, okay. astounding. I would just get out of prison. And I would never, ever report. That was my deal. Okay. I just would never report to, report to the parole office. So it's like astounding for sure. And then whatever yeah. they call me sleeping at that moment, you know. But yeah. I don't have too much drug beast, bro. I, like I said, I kept that shit pretty, pretty tight, you know. Yeah. Well, first, go ahead and tell me uh, what prisons you went to, man. You say you went from a level one all the way to three. Uh, why don't you name some of the level three yards and uh, a couple of those ones you've been to? Okay. Well, like I said, I got two numbers, California, P88501, F88337. On my okay. P number, I hit all those low levels, man. I've been to a couple uh, CCFs, Mesa Verde, Central Valley CCF, Mule Creek Level 1, CMC West, hit a bunch of the low yards. Then I came back on my F number. I caught a four-year term for a uh, burglary GTA, and that's when I came to level three points. I went to Solidad. It's funny because I went to Solidad, the end of my P number with a level two points to a two-yard Solidad. And I came back level three points, saw that level three. I went to Corcoran. I did that COCF stuff. They sent California inmates out of state, Arizona. I opened up a level three yard there in El Palma. I went to a North Kern Valley State Prison with a level four 180, but I was on a level three yard, level three gym on the level four yard. So, you okay. know, it's a level three gym, man. It's on the level four yard. They're trying to push all the level four politics. You're trying to please them dudes, you know? Yeah. And that's, you know, uh, you came at me with a very interesting story, man. You said... You were pretty much washed up because of a bad call in one of these. No, no, I never got washed up, bro. Hell no. Oh, okay. I, I discharged my F number from Wasco, D yard, active, good reputation to this day, bro. They tried to wash me, homeboy. Well, what are you I, trying to? Well, what were you saying? You said it was a bad call or something. What? What was that? You want me to get into it? Yeah, let's get right into that story because okay. I want to hear this, man. Okay, now this story, man, it's got some layers, bro. It did not something that sprung open after night. So you're gonna have to follow me, but I'll be able to tie it together real beautiful, homeboy. Okay. Let's now, hear it, started, man. I'm ready. It started on the streets, man. It started on the streets. I got this old lady, this girlfriend I'm with, and her whole family, bro, is all gangster. Her dad did 10 years in Folsom. She's got a couple cousins that are not so good writers. Even her aunt's been to the pen. They're all about their life. They're gangbanging hardcore, you know? So I got this old lady. I met her pat. Her, her, the hub is her grandma's house where they all hung out. So I was over there with her and me and her getting ready to dip out. And we had a TV and some stuff. And we took it out of the bedroom. Boom. Put it in the living room. I mean, I'm sorry, the front yard. Go back in to get another load. When we went back in there, grabbed some stuff, came back out. My TV and stuff was gone. I'm like, damn, what happened? You know? So the grandma that came quick, out. That quick, huh? Yeah, that quick, bro, like that. Like, damn, where's my shit? The so grandma came out and said, I seen the aunt and her boyfriend snatch it up. So I was like, damn. So I jumped in my truck. I go looking for them. I see their uh, tail lights. I catch up to them. They tried running from me, bro. They go through a field. They run out of gas. I guess they run out of gas because they stopped. And he, I know he didn't stop the fights. So he never got out the truck, you know? I yeah. jump out the I got my bat. First thing I do is I just smash the TV. Everyone gives me crap over that to this day. Like, bro, why'd you smash the TV? It's like, if you want it that bad, here you can have it, you know? I just smash yeah. the TV there, sure. Plus, I felt like if I was to grab it with both arms and try to pick it up, you could dump me with a rock or something. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm not trying to retrieve my property. I'm just trying to let him know, hey, you can't get over on me like that, you know? Smash yeah. the TV, maybe hit like the headlight or something. He never got out. His old lady got out, and, you know, his old lady and my lady, like, Ugh. They're, they're, they're related, you know, so they're talking shit to each other. Boom, we dip out. I never think nothing of it, bro. It never crossed my mind. That's a very important part of the story. Never think nothing of it. Never see that dude again. A couple months later, bro, on the streets, I stabbed one of our homeboys. A lot of people get mad at me because he's a good-ass dude. He he said, you said one of your homeboys? He's from Bakersfield, one of the homeboys. Okay. He's not really my homeboy, but he's a homeboy from Bakersfield. All right. So he, he's been to prison a bunch of times. He's half Mexican, half white, but he runs wood. His brother's obviously half Mexican, half white. He runs South Sider. His, his brother's got a whole lot more respect than he does, but both of them got a lot of respect coming from the town. They've done some time. They've been around. They've slung the sack. I stabbed Why'd you him. stab him for? Over a girl, man. Over a girl. We've been funking over that same girl with the TV for like six months, back and forth. She would go with him, go with me type shit, you know? And then when he was at my house, he would come write long letters and like nail him to my door. Someone was going to go to the hospital, bro. It was on the crack for like six months talking shit back and forth on the phone, barely missing each other, blah, blah, blah. What happened was I was standing on the street in broad daylight, California Avenue, in front of a Prop 36 class. He was driving down the road. He must have seen me. 
So he got out, parked his car, and rushed me from the back. All I heard was the footsteps, and boom. He pushed me up into a bush, bro, and he has, like, the back of my neck, and he's just doming on me, hitting me in the, in the back of the head. And he's not a small dude. Yeah. So I got a knife on me. I pulled it, and it's the kind that it's a, uh, it's a long type. It does, you don't have to fold it open. You know what I'm saying? It's got the sheath and all that. So I yeah. pull it, and the sheath ain't all floppy. It's one of them solid kinds. So boop, I pull it. Someone says, oh, he got a knife. And as soon as uh, they say that, I don't feel him on me no more. I turn around. He tried to run. He slipped and fell. He's right there in front of me, laying on the ground. It's like, so I got him twice in the back and once in the leg. I got the leg. Huh? I said, damn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got him. Took off. I got busted that day. I ended up beating him in court and getting a year flat. But a bunch of the homeboys are mad at me. Like, why'd you do a dude like that? You should have gave him a one-on-one -on -one fight. He ain't no piece of shit. You guys are both homeboys. It ain't right you stabbed him. But I'm like, what, did you know he rushed me from the back? Had me hemmed up in a bush, punched me in the back of the head. That don't sound like one on one. So yeah. when I'm in the cells, our county jail has cells that uh, it's called pretrial, and they have the farm. It's all open. I was in what county jail is this? Bakersfield, Kern County. Kern County, okay. Yes, sir. I'm in the cells over there, and I'm getting kites from all these dudes from the farm. Talking about if you roll up out here, you got an issue coming. And I'm even getting uh, kites from my my people, my homeboys that I run with. I talk about come out here and watch your back because these dudes are all pissed off. You did that. They weren't tripping on where I was at. You know what I'm saying? No one was tripping where I was at. So I go off and do my year flat. It never gets brought up again. I get out. I'm out a couple months. Go back into Wasco Reception. Now here comes the bad call, bro. Couldn't believe it. Wasco so Reception. Doing, Wasco Reception. Okay. We consider it our backyard, bro, because uh, Kern County, Bakersfield, that's the only reception we go to. You know, we may set trip a little bit. Bakersfield boys, we say Wasco Reception. That's our backyard. Because everyone okay. else can go to like Delano, they can go to Hatchby, they can go to Chino. They get their cars get spread out different receptions. We only go there. We're deep there. Boom! It's our backyard. Wasco reception. Okay. I'm in there. Been in there just like a day or so playing pinochle. One of my good homeboys. He's like, "Hey, Splinter, tell me about that stabbing. What happened?" So he gets up and starts walking away from the table. I was like, "Damn, here we go. Here we go with this shit." So I get up and follow him. I say, "Hey, man, what, what are you tripping on?" He goes, "Look, that dude's a real good friend of mine. He's kind of like family." He's like, I'm going to have to think about this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I go, all right, think about it. Now, keep in mind, I'm fresh off the street, still kicking heroin. This old boy has been fighting a case like however long, county jail. He's a porter. He's been at Wasco for a minute. He's working out. He's big and buff. He's on yeah. deck and ready to rock. Me, I'm, I'm fresh off the streets, jagging ass, bro. I'm still beat up. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I don't care. I said, think about it. Do what you got to do. Whatever. She comes at me later and says, look, I know if uh, you had stabbed me, old boy wouldn't do nothing about it. He wouldn't bust a grape. So I'm not going to trip on you, but we can't be friends. We can't be hanging out. I wouldn't want it to get back to him that, yo, me and you was in here chopping up. She had ain't right. I go, cool, let's just keep our distance. I ain't tripping. That was in the morning time. We eat inside there. It's a dorm. We eat in there. They send a couple cart pushers out to the kitchen and come back with the big carts. You feel me? And yeah. you, we're in H4, so we see the people from H3. They all go, boom. So homeboy comes back. We eat dinner. The porters get to take a shower, and I see him in the shower, and he's just mad dogging me hard, bro. He's in the shower, and he's just like, Right at me. I was like, so he must be tripping on that stabbing then. I guess he must have got all pumped up, went and talked to somebody. They, you know, made him feel like he's a badass and he wants to handle it. Whatever. I'm like, okay, he wants to do this. So he gets out the shower. I notice all kinds of people grouping, dude. All kinds of grouping in the back. I'm like, man, what are they? Like, what's going on? Finally, a couple of dudes come up to me and say, hey, grab your paperwork and go to the back where those dudes are. I'm like, paperwork? Like, you guys saw my paperwork. What type of shit is this, you know? So, and the paperwork I had, bro, is the best kite you really get. I was doing a violation. So in that violation packet, it has what your controlling case is, your term, which mine was GTA, and it has all the violations you've done since then. So it's complete. Everything's there, your whole history over the last several years, you know? It's all there. Take your paperwork over the back. So I take it. Excuse me. They're looking at it. They're all real rough, like flipping it back and forth. And I'm like, what's going on? They're like, you beat up an old lady. I go, what? Yeah, you beat up an old lady. I said, what old lady is this? I said, what are you guys talking about, man? And they're all looking at my paperwork and shit. And then someone's like, well, don't say no charge like that in his paperwork. Like, no, nah, he beat up an old lady. I'm like, like some dude named, we're in H4. In H3, some dude named said, yeah, I had beat up an old lady. I said, you know what? Well, that dude's a punk. His mom was a punk. Everyone even knows him's a punk. Let me go push cars, tell him how I feel. But I think of him, he could tell me to bite my face. I beat up some old lady. Smut me up as a California attorney. You got smut on you, you mean draw bad. Smutting you up means they're talking shit behind your back. He's smutting me up, bro. Let me go push carts. They go, okay, well, you're going to go push carts. That's where it laid, right? I was going to push carts and get at him. But this guy, he wouldn't let it go. He was mad dogging me, talking shit. With him. Me and him end up, fight, end up fighting. I have a bomb. Breaks my nose. Knocks me out. I get up. I'm mad about it. Get in another fight. We're fighting. Boom, boom, boom. Then they break it up. Same dude? Like, 
Same dude. He won't let it go. He won't let it go. Anyway, a couple dudes were there. They got invited since it was a, a bigger sort issue. A couple outside dudes had to come in and check it out because, you know, sort it out because it looked like a problem within the town. So these dudes get involved and they're like, look, the paperwork's good. You guys can't keep rushing this dude and fighting. We have to check it out. He has to go push the carts, you know? So anyway, after the last fight we got into, man, this dude, he's over in the corner and he has like a little crowd around him. There's like 10 dudes or so. And he's like, yeah, I got him like this. I got him like that. And I punched him. So I pushed up on him and said, bro, it's supposed to be a dead issue, man. You beat me up, man. Okay. My, my nose is smashed. We all know you won. You're not going to be in, in the corner over here with these two dudes around. You talk about hit him like this. And I hit him like that. It's not right. I said, you know, I'm kicking heroin. I said, I'm not sleeping all night. I said, I'll come by and I'll slice you in the night while you're sleeping, dude. Just get you to shut up because I can't beat you. Obviously, I tried that. It didn't work. I'm not going to let you just sit around bad mouth me, you know? So then that was a new issue. Oh, no. Now he threatened um, homeboy with a weapon. Now he has to go. You know, not only to beat up the old days, supposedly, now he's threatening homeboy with a weapon to slice him in his sleep. Can't be doing that. So then they did try to tell me to roll up. And I said, no, I'm not going nowhere. This is my career in and out. You're not going to push me no PCR. Take me out on a stretcher. It's not going to happen like that. So I went and rolled up. So then this up, these two dudes are the ones that are really just plotting on me. And just trying oh, so to- you did roll up? No, 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 I didn't. No, oh, okay. I didn't. No, they were telling me to. They were telling oh, okay. me. To. I thought no, you but- said you did for a second. Maybe no, I just heard you wrong. No, never that. But they're trying to get me to for all kinds of different reasons. For stabbing homeboy, for now I'm threatening to slice this dude. And then for the old lady, they're just like trying to combine it and just trying to paint me as this. I'm just all bad. Some kind of. But, some type but of- why did they get the idea that you did something to an old lady? I'm going to get there, bro. Okay, I'm okay. Remember I told you I chased that dude with the TV and stuff? Yeah. That's why I told you that. I'm going to get there. I'm going to tie it together. Okay. So that's what they said that I beat up no lady, bro. It's not in my place. It works nothing. So anyway, we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. Anyway, these two dudes, since everyone won't make me roll up and leave, they say, look, we don't even want to be part of the Bay Show car no more. We're going to cut the whole car loose and just ride on our own because you got that dude here in the car. So we're not going to do it. And these other guys say, matter of fact, the guy I fought first, a couple of his homeboys come at me like, we want to fight you now to get our homeboys respect because you won't roll out and he's mad, blah, blah, blah. So now these two dudes off in the corner, I just got my nose broke, smashed by old boy. Now two other dudes, one who's from San Jose, way up north. I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? Like, I didn't know his trip. He's like, yeah, I want to fight now. It's like, okay. So I fight this guy, fight another guy. Then they all jump me. And when they jump me, the cops see it. And that's when they come in and spray everyone down. They take us out. They tell the cops, this dude's a piece of shit. He beat up an old lady. Now the cops will treat me like shit. Like, oh, you bum. You freaking beat up old lady. I'm like, why? Because that's what dude said. The cop said, look, we're going to put you in a building way on the other side of the prison. If this follows you and we have to have an, uh, another incident where you get beat up over this old lady crap, we're going to force you into PC. We're going to take you out. We're going to force you and put you somewhere we can protect you. They're thinking I'm going to go there and be quiet, not knowing as soon as I get to their spot and tell everybody exactly what happened. You know, I'm going to throw it all out there, bro. So they put me to H5, which is on D yard, way across the other side. I go in there. I say, all Baker's still to the back. All Bachelor comes, I say, this is what happened. This is who jumped me. Here's my paperwork. This is what they're saying about an old lady. I guess it came from some dude named, and this dude did that. I don't know, man, but here I am. Broken nose, beat up, lumped up, and this is what happened. They're like, we're not even tripping on it. We don't care. Whatever. The paperwork's good, and that's all we care about. That's how it stayed. I didn't know nothing about it, man. It just got dropped. Then I got out. I went to county jail again, and some dude walks up to me. And he says, hey, bro, my name's Stephen Reeves. Myself to you. Like, hey, what's up, man? He goes, hey, I really apologize for what happened you over there in H4. Because I was next to three, next door in H3. I was one of the ones sending the kite over there telling me to get you, man. I apologize because I know it was a bad call. I said, what happened, dude? Why'd you guys do that? I said, I'm so confused. He said, there was a guy named said that you beat up his old lady's grandma. And it was your old lady's grandma, too. And he said that you you roughed her up. And I was like, oh, damn. That dude, the TV, bro, trying to say I beat up my old lady's grandma. I was like, dude, I was like, that's crazy. I wish I'd have known at the time that that's what they were saying and what it was. You know, he was afraid that I would drive up in there and they'd say, Splinter's next door. And I hear about him and I go, oh, that dude, he's whack. Uh, he ran from me. I busted up his truck, his truck with a bat. So he just smothered me up to get me out of there, bro. So I wouldn't be able to come at him, which I would have saw him. I wouldn't even recognize him. And even if I did, I wouldn't have said nothing. Hey, I hit you with your truck with a bat. I would not even say that, bro. So he put me through all that. So dude, it's like, hey, I apologize. That's where it come from. And the funny thing is, is a couple dudes afterwards went by grandma's house. I'm like, hey. We got old boy in Wasco for beating up grandma, trying to get some brownie points with the family. I told you they're a gangster family. And they're like, what? They got mad. Like, you're disrespecting us now. You're trying to say that that dude could beat up grandma. We wouldn't handle it ourselves. If he had done that, he'd be dead. You guys didn't yeah. do nothing to make yourselves look stupid, in our opinion. So it was yeah. a big old crazy ass deal, dog. All behind a woman. I'm, All behind a girl. All behind a girl. 
That's not the first wreck she got me to. Yeah, man. All behind a, behind a girl, bro. Crazy. Right? That's, that's crazy as hell, man. Well, let me, well, so, uh, who were you running with over there? I mean, like, uh, was it, you know, they got little. They're skinheads and there's white boys. I bang, I bang my town. That's what we do in there. We get together. Okay. I'm Bakersfield. Bakersfield white boy. Okay. So you just run with the whites in there pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Now, I do have a little car. It's not, it's not prison at all. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I, my, my roots are punk rock, bro. Heroin addict, street kid, skateboarder, punk rock. And we have a little clique called the Sick Boys. You know what I'm saying? That's about as far as I go with any kind of grouping. But those dudes don't really go to the pen, you know. But, yeah, I'm just yeah. a Bakersfield peckerwood up in there, man. Tell you what, man. Bakersfield go crazy, boy. There's all kinds of crazy articles coming out of Bakersfield. Yeah. It gets buck wild. Yeah. I don't know if it's in the water or if all the moms been having their kids and they've been doing meth while they're pregnant or something. Yeah. That, that's my theory, man. <laughs> That's probably, that could have no, something baby. to do with it. I'll, I'll just yeah. talk it up to the water. <laughs> yeah, talk it up. Would you hey, say Dan. that was probably one of your wildest moments in lockup? It was pretty wild as far as like, because uh, I'm a solid dude, bro. I put in my work ever since my first term, man. I don't care about losing time. I always want to know the right people and say the right thing. I consider this my career. Every time I got out, I didn't try to do good and get a job. I knew I was coming right back in. And I, I'm trying to, like I said, it's my career, bro. I want to have a good name. I want people to know me. And so when something like that happens, you know, people turn on you, trying to say you're all bad. It's, it's a bad feeling. It's a bad feeling. Well, that shit happens, I hear, quite often in California, man. People yeah. getting washed up for bad bad calls and all kinds of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've had my problems with drug debt, too, man. But I never once thought of um, sliding on out like a lot of these dudes. This would be some solid dudes, man, to slide out of that drug debt shit, man. Crazy. Yeah. What would, you, what would you say is uh, one of the roughest spots you've been in? Roughest spot? When I was at Solidad. The second time we had gotten what to level is one. what level is that level three okay. active level three though very active level three i hadn't gotten there and they had just uh the northerners had just killed a white boy excuse me they had uh put this white dude in this northern cell by accident i guess the northern might have been white i don't know the cops put him in there by accident so this dude go in and he's just like he ain't no solid skinhead or nothing he's probably like someone's dad third dui whatever well he lump lump with all due respect he goes in there Hey, I'm so and so from wherever, and this northerner is like, "Oh, I'm a northerner." So the guy goes, "Whoa!" He starts being on the door. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. And the cops like, "We'll get you after count time." My solo dad, you walk in, the cells are—I mean, the beds are to the back. And you got a toilet right here, and everyone makes a curtain, like a privacy curtain, hanging from the ceiling for if you gotta take a dump, you know, you can cover yourself. So this dude told the white guy to sit on his rack. He had to use the restroom real quick, and he got the thing. He got a shank, came out and killed him, bro. Flat out killed him. Every yard kicked that kicked off in the gym. A yard is where it happened, and A yard gym kicked off, and B yard, and B yard gym. Just the whole thing was just active and crazy, man. What northerners I versus uh, the woods? White boys are war with the northerners, and at Soledad, that's crazy because that's like their backyard, and they're deep, and they're freaking vicious and militant, man. And what about? Uh, I mean, y'all run with uh, the Southsiders and stuff like that, correct? So yeah, we do. Did they jump into it? No, no, nope, they, they did not get in that one. No. Nope. Yeah. We run with them in theory. I mean, it sounds good, and I got some yeah, good stuff. Yeah, in theory, to maybe if you, you know, shit came down to it, you know, in certain yeah, they ways. You could have had to. In yeah. fact, man, I got a story. Let me run this one past you, Dev. About Let's do I it, man. I'm, I'm, man. I'm already super interested as already from all the stories okay. you told me. So I was in county jail, man. This one, I got a bad call of the Southsiders. They were going to just whack me up hardcore, me and my celly. I'm in county jail, bro. Depot, like I told you earlier, the sales. And it's pretty active right there in our depot because I – they got either, uh, okay, I'm going to say 10 cells top, 10 cells bottom. What they do is they open up five cells and then let them dudes out going around for four hours and then put them away. Then let the other group of cells out for four hours. They call it a rolling lockdown. They only yeah. let everybody out at once. Every time they do, they kick it off. And I wonder why. It always tripped me out, man. They throw like three chairs in there. You know, don't think we're not going to fight. Like everyone will grab them. One race will grab them all, have them all, boom, it kicks off over the chair. Or they do, they like to do that. We have the phone, they leave it hanging. You know, just dangling them by the cord. Like, that's my phone. Don't touch it. And you go pick it up. Hey, I'm about to use that. I don't know if I'm using it. And it's boom, kick off. So that place, Deep Block, kicks off big time. Yeah. Good old Deep Block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They settled it by only letting a couple dudes out at a time, right? So anyway, I'm up in there, bro. And now the girls come and give laundry, right? They have the side doors up. Train the girls come in. They got all the freaking carts and all that. They got all your laundry needs, sheets, wow. socks. That must be whatever, nice for the right? inmates. Yeah, they make girls coming with all the laundry. Let's say Tuesday, right? And they got white girls and Mexican and black. They got all races. Because the theory is, I mean, they take care of their homeboys. I mean, if you're there on a DUI for two weeks and you ain't been nowhere and you ain't going nowhere, you're probably not going to get the good stuff. But if you're a homeboy, you spend most of your time in the pen, you're there fighting a case, you're on the way to the pen, 
the girl should hook you up, man. You know, some good stuff. You're, you're, you're a homeboy, bro. That's what they do. So this girl is white girl. And she even threw herself out there. Like I, I took her like she's a little bit hood. She had a bunch of tattoos on her and <clears throat> some piercings and she has some dyed hair. I was like, Oh, that's a home girl right there. So I'm asking her to hook me up and she is not doing it, bro. Everybody else is getting hooked up. All I was trying to do was get a cool thermal. Uh, you know, I got some business coming out with a tight neck. There's new ones. Everyone else was rocking new thermal. She's just giving me junk, bro. Damn. So I'm asking, hey, can you hook me up? She ain't doing it. So finally, one time after I got some laundry that was just straight boo-boo again, my tray slot, I flip her off, dog. And I admit it was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. It was childish. And if any white boys have been around there, I could probably get, you know, beat so up. So you're that. not allowed to do that? Huh? You're not allowed to give a girl flipper to bird? No, nah, it depends on who was there. They might say it's disrespectful. You're making us look bad. You shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. Plus, it falls Jeez. under that cell soldier. Like, if you're behind your cell, definitely if it was another dude, you get beat up. Because you can't have another dude out there. Hey, screw you, man. I hate you. What's up? What's up? The cell separating, you know? So, it's like let that me, cell soldier. Yeah, let me stop you for one second. Over here in Virginia, a girl comes through there. Inmates, every, just about every inmate's going to give her the most disrespectful uh, cat at calling home. that girl has ever heard in her life. New York City cat calling has nothing <laughs> compared to some of the prisons I've been to. I mean, it will make and break a female correctional officer. You know what I mean? So that's oh, crazy to hear that y'all got the respect thing like that when it comes to just flipping a bird to a girl. Yeah, oh, man. It's crazy. The correctional officers there? They'll cat call them? Yeah. Sergeants, Ooh, captains, yeah. lieutenants, you name it. They get it. They can get it. As soon as they step in the box, they're getting catcalled, talked down in any way, shape, or form. No one gives a shit. Yeah, no, we can't do that. We have to have the utmost respect for the cops. Your own people will beat you up for doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, like I, I said, I've been hearing this, man. They say yeah. that one of the rules when they come at you is like, you, we respect the police. What's up oh, with that, man? I thought, I thought, I'm thought i not saying it's bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying no, like. No, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> I, yeah, I get it. I think it's maybe the repercussions. They were, you know, they'll come in and tear your stuff up, and we don't want yeah. them on the bad side type deal, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, this old girl, man, I, I flipped her off, man, because she just kept, I, kept, I felt like she was flipping me off over and over with the clothes she was giving me. All I asked for was a thermal. So I, I give her the bird, right? And I didn't think nothing of it. A couple of days go by, and uh, we got the morning unlock. It's like 4 a.m., uh, our cell opens. I jump up where the walls meet in the corner. I got my coffee right there. I'm sitting there making the coffee here. I get up, and I feel like a presence in the cell. I turn around, look, and there's four cell siders. One of them's up in my face, and he's, he's got a chip on his shoulder anyway. He just got six of 85 for a little bit of dope, but he swears the cops planted. So he's always yeah. like, mad anyway. The dude behind him has, you know, he's got his hand down his thing, boxes. I know he's hiding a, a weapon. And the other two back to none of them are slouches, bro. And they're pushing up hard. I'm like, whoa, what's up? And they go, hey, he goes, hey, dude, how come you flipped off that girl? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, you flipped off a girl. I'm thinking, what? He goes, yeah, laundry. I go, oh, yeah, I flipped off a girl at laundry. I was like, yeah. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm white, she's white, you're South Sider, like, think myself, no, your damn business, first of all, but why do you care? I was like, yeah, I was like, she's white, bro, white. He's like, no, you flip off white girl. Now get this, little did I know, there was a girl in there who was some big high power shot caller in the hole somewhere. That's his tia, his aunt, his old lady, something. She's related to some big homie somewhere, some messing girl who happened to be standing off to the side from the white girl and she thought I was flipping her off. So they send all these kites in there saying some crazy white boy flipped off old girl who's related to old boy. You guys got to go in there and just whack them. Just get them. They're getting these kites. Get that dude. So they push off. They're ready to get it. They're going to get just tear into my butt, bro. And my cellies. And so he's telling me, no, you flipped off this, you know, home girl. And I was like, hey, man. And he's luckily, I've been there with him for a minute. He gave me a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, you know? So he's like, hey, man, why well, can't believe you do that? And he kept saying to himself, if I don't do this, I'm going to be a piece of shit. He's like, if I don't do this, I was like, whoa, pump your brakes, bro. Kick back. And I go, I didn't do it. I go, there's a white girl. You know who it is. You've seen her. I wouldn't flip off a messing girl. It was a white girl. He goes, hang on. He goes, let me, let me, let me figure this out. And he left the cell. So they're going to shoot some kites, make some phone calls of their cell, you know? Well, so, how were you feeling when this stressed was Stressed out, on? bro. Stressed out. Big Heart time. Pumping, and my huh? coming, they're going to get my celly too. And he's coming at me like, damn, dog, you got us in the big old wreck, man. Oh, like, man, you're selling pissed. I know. Yeah, yeah. Think about him. He's crazy. He looked real mean, dude. My cell, he looked real tough. He was like six foot one, 220, big shoulders, shade head, goatee. I mean, bro, he looked like he was about that business, but he wasn't, man, at all, bro. He, <laughs> no. he said, man, what the hell did you get me up into, man? Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he was like, damn, bro. And I was like, hey, it'll be all good. So, so he's out making calls and kites and whatever going to do. And I'm, I'm waiting for him to give me a word. And then uh, a couple hours later, man, it's chow time. This cop comes in, catches this other Southsider working out with a workout bag, 
And that right there in pre-trial, the cops are never on the floor with us, ever, ever. We, we communicate with them through the speaker or through the bubble. If, they, if the cops come in, we all go in, shells get locked. So this cop decides to open the dude's cell and go in there and take a workout bag from him. Well, that, that South Sider splits tips all over him. So beating that cop down, dude, for coming in the cell. So they lock us down for like three or four days. And the whole three or four days, I'm thinking, dude, what's going to happen with the chick and the laundry and those dudes, man? Like, man, I'm, every time someone comes in, I'm looking at a cell. Did he just get slid a kite? Like, what is going on, man? That was the longest four days of my life because for all I know, the cell's going to crack. They're going to come over and just boom because they had to, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, it, it opened up. He said, yeah, it's all good. He said, you know, that was kind of a, a bad look for you to flip even that white girl off. You shouldn't have done that. And let me tell you this, bro. The clothes I started getting after that, if they were bad before, bro. This thermal I got, I do not know how they shrunk it to get it that freaking small, dude. It wouldn't fit my eight-year-old son. I get this thermal in. I'm like, oh, man. They really start doing me <laughs> bad on the phone after that, dog. They were disrespecting you, man. What's up with that, man? I don't know, man. Hating. They don't want me to look too good, dog. They don't want me to look too good. Yeah, they don't want they don't want old Splinter looking good, taking all them janks from them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that's so, wild, yeah, man. man. Uh, that's it's so crazy. The politics over there. I ain't gonna lie, man. It's unbelievable. Uh. Well, you miss- went to Arizona too, right? You, they yeah, shipped you down to Arizona. How was that? Was it very different from California? I know their politics are somewhat similar. No, because check it out. What it was, and this blew my mind too. When they tell me I'm going to Arizona, they snatched me up from Soledad. Go, I figure it's an Arizona prison that maybe California leased one of their blocks off them or something. Little did I know it's a California prison. California built there, full of all California inmates, all California rules, and California. It's all California. It What's the name well of this place? California. Huh? What's the name? It was uh, La Palma, correction, La Palma. Elroy, okay. California. Yeah, it was just a building that someone built, and then California, boom. We got there. It was just all California. Because the thing is, there's like 30-something prisons in California, and the California voters said they not, cannot build any more prisons here. So when they start getting inmates, they go build them elsewhere, and they smash, send us out, they whoop, whoop. But you might as well be in California. It's all the same. Yeah. Except for when I got there, man, the cops were just straight bozos. They were like, you know, they were like Walmart cops. They didn't know none of the rules. Like, when you get a package in California, you can have one every 90 days, and it's got to be a certain type of stuff. Dude, we can get a package every damn day. This one dude got some razors in a box mailed to him, and the cop just handed it to him. Didn't even open it. It was all taped tape shut, man. Like, here you go. There could have been a pound of weed and a big old butcher knife in there. They just didn't know. They didn't know, and they were kind of scary. They didn't really want There were a lot of pleas and thank yous out of them. And, but it was cool. We went there. The sales were huge. We had video games, all remote controls and cable. Damn. Yeah, it was cool, man. Video games in the cell or in the gym or something? Video games right there in your cell. PlayStation. Stop I never, playing, I, man. I never GTA. That was the first time I ever played Grand Theft Auto, man. Yeah, I loved it. And then, and then you got course, out and you know, got a Grand Theft Auto. What's that? I know, I know. That's right. I was there for a Grand Theft Auto. All but right, then no, you know comes rolling in with those uh, video games, PlayStation, they start smuggling into porn, bro, and there are all kinds of rules of that. You can't do that. You can't sit oh, your, what? You I don't can't, know why they have to. Huh? You can't. Porn. Porn DVDs. You can't watch porn? Well, they just had all kinds of rules attached to it, you know, because people, I, you know, I didn't really know. I didn't really want to participate anyway, but I guess people were getting messed up for going like another race of sales, sitting three or four deep in there watching a porno, which that's not my style anyway. I wouldn't do it, but yeah, they had all kinds of, that was tripping people out, like, you know, because they're real leery of the sexual stuff out here, man, California. Any kind of weird thing, you know? So yeah, the porn. Oh, and plus what they had first was a lot of um black porn. And so the white guys trying to get that and they're like, no, you can't be looking at that. Blah. Oh, it's some white girl porn or something. So it was weird, bro. They had to politic over the porn. <laughs> Politicking over porn, man. I and you come over, you come over here in Virginia. Yeah. You see just a little bit of fuzz from a network on the television because we used to get this station, man. Uh, it would come in all fuzzy, but you could hear it. You know what I mean? It was a oh yeah, station, and yeah. Uh, we could hear it through our radio. And you would mm-hmm. see every free, you would see the whole block pretty much the cell door getting it in, man. Gun, gun yeah. in the freaking sounds with their cellmate in the freaking cell, you know? Yeah. First time I was a cell dad, I was in a welding class and it was Friday. They clean up early, you know? And I noticed all the dudes starting to go in this like classroom they got and they had this hidden spot and they pulled out some old dusty VCR porn from the 70s. <laughs> they put that thing in and there was all kinds of, you know, you couldn't really see it real clear and boom, you know, the music and stuff. And they all uh-huh. passed, like watching it like this, man. So look, yeah, someone sent me an email saying, look, I'm just trying to support uh, my man that has life. What do you think is the best way? I said, nudes, yeah, uh, phone calls, dirty talk, and just being there in general. 
That's all, all that. he needs. That's all he yeah. needs. You know what I mean? Uh, of course, you can send some money, but first and foremost, a man that has life, he needs some women in yeah. his life in some way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? You bet. Uh, and I just did a video, man, on Gay for the Stady Bunk. If you don't have a woman, don't that don't mean you're going to hook up with some hairy leg dude. <laughs> there ain't no gay for the stay, homeboy. Yeah, hey. Let me ask you about that. So you never seen or witnessed anything like that? I heard like uh, cats like that kind of get their own blocks or something like that. Who are the homosexuals? Yeah. No, not in California. Not allowed to kick it. They, they just uh, throw them in PC or something? Yeah, I don't know where they go, but if they show up and, and they're gay, they just they don't get to hang out. I mean, you yeah. don't want to be showering with some dude. Is he checking you out? or And then you're going to get the boyfriend-girlfriend drama, boyfriend-boyfriend drama. I don't know, for whatever reason... You know, our big homies, the powers of B, just say, hey, ain't going to happen. You're not going to have hopes I'm, no I'm going to tell you all a story, and I haven't told this to anybody. I just, I got an email, and I actually started doing an interview on him. And no disrespect to you, man. I know you might watch. Uh, not you, but the guy who might watch. Uh, we were doing an interview, and we got about 30, 40 minutes in. He's from California, and he was in the mix or whatever. And then at the end of the, towards the end of the interview, he's like, yeah, uh, yeah, I was undercover the whole time. He was, wow. yeah, he was gay the whole damn time and no one knew it. And he was in there in the mix with people. Uh, mm -hmm. The audio was messed up, but at, the, but at the same time, like, man, you need to tell me that before the interview. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, Just, I've seen dudes like that who I thought were undercover. Like, there's a little bit of sugar in old boy's tank. He's a little yeah. sweet. You know oh, you like, have. It's there. Trust and believe. You can uh, tell. You can tell, huh? Yeah, yeah I mean, some people can't, you know? Uh Obviously, this guy flew under the radar for years without being noticed, so it is what it is. Um, I remember County, we had this one dude, and he had a guy visiting him, bringing him money, writing him, and it was his uncle. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, if we, it ain't your uncle, boy, but we just kind of left it alone. The guy don't your want uncle to bring his damn paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see the family photos. Yeah. Anything wild happen in these level uh, one or two prisons? Because I know, yeah. you know, even though it's low level, I've seen some shit crack off in these low levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was at CMC West, level two, I mean, those yards were always kicking off big time. Got into a right there. Even Is when the I was politics as strong or stronger or what? Okay. Is the politics strong or stronger? And, uh, you know. It's the exact same. Just you can hit someone with your fist in them lower levels. When you get up in upper, other, uh, excuse me. No hands levels, policy. No hand policy. So it might be a little bit more strict on stuff, like, you know, more strict. I heard, I heard that they stopped that, actually, just recently. They, the no-hands policy, I think, is, uh, I don't know, I might be wrong. It's I in effect or it's not in effect? Yeah. No, I hear that it, it's not in effect right now. Uh, yeah, but good. I could be wrong. Don't don't quote me on that. It's just something I, I'm pretty sure my memory bank is, uh, yeah. you know, accessing right now. I heard it down the road somewhere, but. Stuff changes all the time. Yeah, it, it just it changes all the time. And I guess it's whoever it's has the keys to the yard at the time as well. Yeah. You know? um, have yeah, you seen, seen Bryant's lower levels, even a Mesa Verde. It's right here in Bakersfield. It's known as a CCF. I don't know if you know about the CCFs, but that's as cush as you can get, bro. They, get, they hand out popcorn and sodas on Friday. They got carpet. Real super sweet. And we almost got into a massive right there, man. Carpet? Huh? They got carpet? Carpet. In they the prison? Yes, and microwaves. And well, we had we had microwaves. We had microwaves even all the way up to a level four. I think level fives even had microwave. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. But yeah, carpet. Come on, tell me about this carpet. What kind of setting was this, man? Paint the picture. Okay, it's just a real nice and clean facility, and you have the day room. You go in with the plexiglass to keep the noise out, so people sleeping right here don't hear the TV. And yeah, it's carpeted and it's clean, and they'll come by to do like a uh, every Friday to see who what dorm is the cleanest, and they'll hand out like points. Oh, this dorm's the cleanest. They get two six packs of soda instead of one and the cops you know what makes a difference in a joint bro is the cops if you got the real cdc they're the real cops or if you got those janky ass rented cops from walmart yeah. you know, that's what makes the difference the ccf has those walmarts they don't care they make a 12 bucks an hour a lot of times you could finagle them to ccf bring them you said ccf community correctional facility okay it's just and like an outside carpet tour. that's crazy yeah, that was yeah, one of my favorite that was one of my favorite things i was looking forward to hitting the streets and stepping on carpet Oh, yeah. It's a nice carpet, bro. God, I hated walking around in that damn concrete all damn day and steel. There's nothing soft in prison, man. You know, besides no. maybe uh, a couple dudes. Little, little Bobby down, down the street. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there's nothing soft in there. So when you, 
you know, go outside and just touch the grass in the yard. That was one thing, but most yards didn't have grass. It was gravel or dirt, you know. Uh, so that was something I always looked forward to was the carpet and the silverware. You know, yeah. uh, God, I couldn't stand them sports, man. I couldn't no, I stand know. them shits. Uh, that's no. crazy. So at, at um, Verde, we almost got a big riot, man, because um, where at? Someone, huh? at Mesa Verde at the carpet spot, the real soft spot. It's going to be a big riot because, like, they have – here's the dorm, and they have, like, the cops bubble right here, and there's, like, a door where the cops go in their little thing. Someone tried snitching, and they rode a, a kite to the cops. I can't remember the, the details of it. And they tried putting under the door a little bit of paper sticking out. So someone comes by and sees that and pulls it. Like, what's this? Oh, someone telling. And a white, white boy found it. And there was a misspelled word in there. So what he did is he went and gathered up all the South Siders, none of the whites, just the South Siders, and said, we're going to have a spelling bee. Do you know how to spell this word, X, I, Y, and Z? Oh. And they're like, uh, not really. And they're getting it wrong. He's like, you must have did that kite. This white dude telling the Mexican dude that. Boy, the Mexicans heard about that. They start grouping. They got hot as can be. Man. They probably don't even know English that well. You know? Know, just, know, they're I getting them to like spell out word. damn supercalifragilistic expialidocious no, out man. that joint. No, it's not good, bro. <laughs> That's crazy, man. <laughs> And the thing about that, if it kicks off at a place like that, everyone's going to die because there's no one there to break it up. You got those soft cops who are trained to lock, lock it up in a room somewhere, call and in it's for a help. dorm, right? Dorm, yeah. But we were all outside and we were surrounded. We were so outnumbered. We were like about 30 right here. And there's about 75 of them. And they were like in different groups or surrounding us. And we were in one main group, you know? And you're looking around, you're seeing bling, blink of light off that metal and all that. It's like, dang, over oh, a spelling bee. Yeah. So, Have you ever seen, uh, go ahead. No, I said I ended up getting squashed. Okay. Uh, have you ever seen anyone just completely, any car completely disrespect the politics and say, you know, I don't give a shit about the politics. I'm about to get them right now. I'm going to get somebody? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another, another, of another car, race. They just said, screw the politics, man. Screw talking. I'm getting them, you know? Have you ever seen something like that happen? Mm. Not really, man. I really haven't seen anyone just uh, try to go by all the steps you have to take to get something done. Except for what happened to me with the old lady. That, I mean, that story, they were saying, screw the politics as a good old boy. Yeah. But I have not really seen it too much. I've okay. seen dudes that had the keys do some funny stuff, or some, do some stupid stuff. Yeah. Um, when we had that big riot with the Northerners on A Yard, it kicked off on A Yard in the, in the blocks, and then it kicked off in the dorm. And they weren't sure if it's going to spill over to B Yard or not. They weren't really sure. It did. But the first place it's going to kick off is in that gym right there in BR. The dude who had the keys, I was going to say his name almost, whatever, he had keys. And he was supposed to get it at a yard, figure it out, is it going to spill over, what's going to do. But instead, he just went and talked to the northerners. He's like, is everything cool? And they're like, yeah, everything's cool. We're not going to do nothing. So he told all the homeboys, all the whites, like, hey, they said they're cool. They're not going to do nothing. So everyone put their guard down, and they got rushed and just straight molly You know? So that's yeah. where he messed up. He didn't pay attention to politics. He's supposed to reach out and do the right thing. He took it upon himself to go talk to them. Hey, are you guys not going to do nothing? You promise? And yeah. that's the closest I could think of someone not really minding their P's and Q's. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if I answered your question right or not. You did. I'm trying to think. I had another question. It kind of just flew out my mind. Uh, let me try to think about it here. Who do you think – who would you say, uh, in your opinion – would be one of the most powerful individuals or groups in the California Department of Corrections or scariest or something along those lines. Okay. Who I've met, who I've seen. Yeah. Okay. No, like now, what car you would say is just. Oh, know. the North, the Northerners without a doubt. The Northerners. Yeah. I hear yeah. they're, they don't have uh, as many numbers as some, but they're treacherous and they're well, really yeah, militant. Where you're at, they can only go to a few prisons. So when yeah. I was a saw that they were deep, they can go there. Yeah. And they're the type they will come up when they start stabbing you. They just like stab until the cops get there. Well, most everybody else will stab, hand the piece off, old boy flush it. These two jump, boom, 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 get rid of the weapon. Like, no, they're just like, we're going to stay poking. And then they'll just get vicious for nothing, for very little things. They don't use drugs. They don't get drunk. They have all these rules, hardcore workout, stay together. And so, yeah, you don't want, you know, when I found out, saw that when I got there in R&R, we're at war with them. I was like, okay, this is going to be a tough one. <laughs> Damn, what I walk into. And look you know? what I seen one of them do, bro. So so we were locked up. We'd been locked up for six months by now. We slammed in, not getting out at all. They start running white showers, which they'd come by and gathered up a few whites and let them go down and take a showers. So me and my Sally still didn't do it. We bird bath. And a lot of times people would do it just so they can go to sell a sale. Talk, hey, homeboy, what's up? Ooh, take this magazine. Blah, blah, blah. So they would get out and shower. Well, the cop, and I still don't know why, I don't know if it was a white cell and they moved a northern end or the cop was just being crazy, whatever. 
cop unlocks a snorther's cell with all these white dudes down there showering. Snorther comes out with a freaking knife in his mouth, I guess. He's on the second tier and shimmies down and jumps down and goes into a group of naked like white a dudes. a damn pirate. Yes. It was crazy. And I was able to see it because I was across. I couldn't see once he went under me, the showers, what, what happened. I heard the noise, but I see him come out of that cell with that knife in his mouth, like creeping, bro. And he just sung off the cell. And then boop, boop, boop. And uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty ballsy, bro. Pretty damn ballsy. That's crazy, man. What they, uh, he get them guys pretty decent? Yeah, he got a couple of them. And then uh, on that time, he did try to actually get away and throw the shank under one of some boy's cells. And so while he was like trying to get away, they got him and they're on him. And, you know, they were naked and, you know, I think they tried yeah. to do some stuff like, hey, yeah, yeah, take that. Remember? You know, since they had naked come out of the shower. Straight disrespect. Disrespect. Yeah, they had a little fun with it, you know? Yeah. And um, so that was pretty crazy, bro. Yeah, that sounds, that yeah, sounds if he had wild. Not done that, if they would open his door and he had not done that, they would have whacked him. The policy is like on site, your door opens, you got to go do that. So you didn't even have a choice. But he yeah. made it look real good. He made it look real good, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, don't go to California Penitentiary, you know, unless it's uh, CCF. CCF, come get the carpet. And it's six Got seconds. dang carpet. <laughs> and the popcorn, ice cream, PlayStation, Jesus. Yes, yes, you know? yes. Uh, but always adhere to the politics, ladies and gentlemen. That's one thing for sure. Get to know your politics, where you're at, and don't go, don't go astray because uh, you might end up in a bad place. But look, man, look. I appreciate you coming on to the show. You got a YouTube channel. That's right. I forgot, man. What's your channel name? Tell me a little bit about it. Okay, it's called Methadone Detox. And like I said, I started getting off this methadone about 30 days ago, and I wanted to vlog it. And I tapered. I went through all that. I got a lot of supports. People sub. You know, it's a community of us trying to get clean, man. We help each other out because, you know, you really can't bank on how it's going to affect you. It's different for everybody. Come together yeah. and, you know, different things that help this guy. Might not help this guy, blah, blah, blah. So then, I, like I said, I, start, I got inspired by you, bro. Really got inspired by you. Shout out 1090 Jake. I love that dude, man. Yeah. I don't care his blood, but I, I love that dude. I think it's cool. I think he's authentic. I got inspired by it. And so I flipped my method on detox channel. I'm like, I'm going to throw a prison story out there and see what kind of reaction I get. People love it. People are feeling it. I love telling them. So here we go. I don't know if I'm going to change the name of the channel from Methadone Detox. You know, once it's all full blown prison, no more Methadone Talk. I might keep it there. I'm not sure, but Methadone Detox, man. Yeah. You should. I would change it. I would change it to something a little more appealing. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe. Right. Maybe something to where, you know, because methadone, I mean, I know under, I understand you're trying to talk about that stuff, but still, you know, a name like that. Uh, yeah, put it on a t-shirt. Yeah, you can't just I'm slap not, that on a t-shirt, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think that would be uh, probably a good uh, a good little change. Is a different. I've changed my name three times on my channel, you know? So, hey, but don't um, change it again, man, because that's the one right there. Oh, I, I can't change it again anyway. That was my last time. Uh but I love the name now, and I'm good. I'm set in stone. And, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, but it's all up to you, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm going to change it. But for now, it's Methadone Detox. I got a couple yeah. of vid videos up there about a riot. You should, I got you should do Master Splinter's Detox. Yes. Woo! You know, I hated that nickname, bro. Splinter really? when I That's a badass stand. name, dude. Yeah, well, what happened was it's kind of my homeboy, Ronnie Owens, gave it to me. He's a good friend of mine to this day. And what it came, I was a small dude. I'm a small dude now. This is me, 165. This is me swole up, bro, on that drilling rig. But out yeah, there on that, right. I, I get slim and trim like a bicycle ram, bro. I get sucked up and small. So there, so the joke was, you're not even big enough to be a wood. You're just a splinter. You know what I'm saying? That's where oh, that name Oh, okay. You're, no wood, you're a splinter, homeboy. You're too small. Damn. Then, well, scratch that master splinter name. Yeah. But they wasn't supposed, supposed to be disrespectful. It was just joking around. A good friend of mine named me that. So I come yeah. back to county jail, and it's like, hey, what's your name, homeboy? Yeah, my name's Chris. Someone's like, hey, splinter, we're back, though. What's up? So it's splinter. Come back again. Hey, what's your name, bro? Chris. Hey, Splinter, what's up? So it's like, oh, I guess it's Splinter, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's funny. Uh, actually, I had I had something like that follow me one time at a, at a uh, compound. You know, I was really good at cards, and someone just started calling me an alias, man. Just roll with it. You know what I mean? And I roll with it. Screw it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, send me all the links to your social media or whatever you got going on. I'm gonna make sure it's in the description of the video and pin it in the comment section. Look, you got a, you definitely got a good character to yourself, man, and uh, you got a good way of telling stories. And you've been out for what seven years now, correct? Yeah, been doing good. I gave the F number back. I got a little boy now. You know, I couldn't in a good conscience continue to go out there and, and uh, hit it hard with this little boy sitting right here. Yeah, so. I can tell, man. You got a good heart, man. You know, I can yes, tell. Sir. You know. Uh, 
Hey, we're not that far apart, man. We got a barbecue one of these days, bro. One of these days, man. You know, and I'll bring a Chef Death apron for you when I come. Oh, nice. <laughs>